Hi guys, uh, welcome to the High Spirit Travel Vlog. Uh, I will share with you guys my experience on the Air Morocco flight. We actually flew from London to Amsterdam to get our connecting flight to Ghana. It was a really short journey and we actually took the KLM City Hopper flight. It was quick and super convenient. Finally, we've landed. So here we are at Amsterdam uh, Airport. As you can see, it's super busy. We were hustling through the airport to get to the gate where our connecting flight was. It doesn't look like it, but we were actually rushing for our connecting flight to Ghana. We were both surprised at how far we had to walk to our gate. I have been to Schiphol Airport once before, but I totally forgot how big it really is. Um, upon research, it is actually the third busiest airport in Europe in terms of passenger volume and it's actually the busiest in Europe in terms of aircraft movement. Um, here's a fun fact. Schiphol Airport actually was used to, used to be a military airbase and was soon transformed to a civilian airport after the First World War. So there's a fun fact for you, guys. We finally reached our gate. We actually made it just in time. As you can see, the plane is actually waiting for us to board. This was actually my first time flying with Air Maroc, so I didn't know what to expect. I had done my research previously and found some reviews that Air Maroc frequently loses your luggage, especially on connecting flights. So this made me feel a little bit nervous, but despite this, I wanted to see for myself and share the experience with you. In terms of boarding, so far so good. They were very prompt and professional. They actually made the boarding process a lot easier, which I appreciated. Upon entry into the aircraft, they provided an array of international publications, which was great. The plane we was on was the Boeing 787-8. It was a pretty big plane, and as you can see, it was packed. We were going to Ghana during the year of return, so as you can imagine, it was a very busy flight. I travelled in economy class, so I'll be sharing with you the experience in, of Air Maroc in the economy class. From first glance, they had the air conditioning units above me. I get really hot, so um, th those are the first things that I checked out and made sure that they were working. They also had the Air Maroc magazine, which gives you a top cultural taste of Morocco uh, and, you know, something to read and for the long flight. And there was some stuff that you could buy in the in-flight magazine as well. So that was pretty cool. Also, here you have the tray table, which was easy, easily accessible, easy to use. Um, also, another thing that I was really surprised by was the leg room. Um, especially for economy seats, you expect the leg room to be really tight, but it was actually not too bad. And it actually made the flight quite comfortable. So as you can see here, it was very easy for me to move my legs around um, and yeah, no, it was pretty cool. However, as you can see here, there was no in-flight entertainment system. I was pretty surprised by this. Maybe this was a smaller version of the Boeing 787-8, but there were no screens at all, which was quite disappointing given that this was a six hour flight from Amsterdam to Ghana. But by chance I decided to check my phone to see if there was any Wi-Fi access and all the entertainment was on the phone which could be accessed through the Royal Air Maroc intranet. As you can see I'm sliding through the selection of films on my phone. I thought this was a cool feature but I much more prefer having an inbuilt screen on the back of the seat where I can browse music, films and other forms of entertainment more easily and it's much more readily available. In addition, I don't really see the point in accessing films through my phone if I already have my own downloaded films and music already on my phone. But nonetheless, it was still a pretty cool feature. I don't know about you, but I love playing food. I'm always super excited when I see that food cart coming up the aisle. Comment below if you also get excited when you see the food cart. 
So here is dinner. I ordered chicken and potatoes. Here's how it was presented. I like the way it was presented for econ economy class standards. And I like the Royal Air Morocco branding on the packaging on the main dish. It was definitely a nice touch. They had this piece of salmon and it tasted amazing. I wanted more. Also, the yogurt was super nice. I'm the guy to ask for seconds. I don't know about you, but if I like it, I'm just going to ask for if I can have some more. I mean, if you're polite to the flight attendant, they might actually hook you up with some seconds. So here's the main dish. It smelled fantastic and I could not wait to dig in. As you can see, I completely devoured that meal. I told you I love plain food. <laughs> this is further evidence of my love for airplane food. The meal tasted brilliant. The chicken and potatoes were well cooked and it didn't taste processed. The food was pretty high quality for economy class standard. Yes, we finally landed in Ghana safely. When I was doing research on Royal Air Maroc, I kept reading that they were notorious for losing your luggage. It sounded like it was a common experience for a lot of people that flew with them. I even expected for them to lose my luggage. So I decided to also take out insurance. But to my surprise, they did not lose my luggage and all my luggage arrived in one piece. Either I was lucky or Royal Air Maroc may have made some major improvements. But overall, it was a smooth journey. It was a great experience. The Royal Air Maroc staff were really pleasant and friendly and they made the trip very comfortable. We actually have another video coming out showing our Ghana trip in full. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to like this video and to subscribe to stay updated on our videos. Speak to you soon. Take care.